Hi and welcome everyone to the second part of the video how to make programming language on your own and as you could remember from the previous video we made a parser which understands numeric inputs and in today's video we are going to extend that possibility into make being able to accept floating point numbers so and also negative numbers null um, false and true so let's begin in order to add negative numbers into our parser we will need to use the minus sign at the beginning and then add a question mark the question mark makes the um, anything before it questionable uh, meaning that it can exist over there or, or it can be omitted as you can see minus sign does not work and we can use escape capture group sign in order to use either plus or minus Oh, the plus needs to be escaped yeah plus number and minus number but we cannot use both of them at the same time also let's make it possible to use floating point numbers and how we will do that is we will use the same no capture group sign put um, a escape character put dot because floating point numbers are uh, used are accessed with uh, dot and we will write from 0 to 9 plus and we will close the we will close our parentheses and this is also with question because Without question, let me show you what's going to happen. Integers are not going to work. With question, both work. But we cannot leave the uh, floating point without writing anything. And now I think our numbers are ready. We are going to add a new data type, booleans. And booleans will be true. We are giving the string true because in JavaScript, true is a special keyword with, which will transform into a, into a value meaning that we will not be able to access it from access it correctly using the percent sign or anything else so we will put it into a string and we will do the same thing for false and also for null as well now let's create boolean which will accept true i believe in nearly we need to write uh, strings with double quotes i am not sure about that statement but let's uh, be on the safe side and let's accept the variable the value v and it will return just true boolean true because it's it already exists in JavaScript so we don't need to implement it on our own and also a boolean can be false this is the or sign by the way you can have many uh, many of them in your language and we got our boolean ready we will also create null though null is a special keyword in nearly 
which uh, represents no input at all, we will need to change it. Let's call it my null and it will accept um, the input null and it will return it will return null itself. Let's change this to v2 because v represents the value. I think it's more clear what it uh, returns. So now we have null, we have boolean and number. But our process only accepts numbers. If we try to write true, then we get nothing. Let's create an instance of value and the value can be number and it will return the first element of the array, a boolean, same way. It will return the ID of the element and it can be my null. And the same thing happens to this one as well. What we can do, we can make our process accept the value and whenever we write any of those particular values, it's gonna be absolutely correct. So the next thing we can add is a white space and we will ignore any white space that is not in the strings. Of course, we don't have strings now, so we don't need to worry about it. But in the next videos, we are going to add strings and uh, many other data types like objects, arrays, and so on. So a space can be, let's use the object because we will also mention that it can accept line breaks. So it will match to any white space one or more and we will also consider line breaks as part of it because um, usually nearly does not accept line breaks uh, does not count line breaks so over here we just let me make it on the center yeah, we will make the white space character. Let's do it with singles uh, underscore sign. And it will accept any space. And we will return just nothing. Also, it can be null, meaning that we can have space or we can omit uh, any space. What we will return, we will return the same thing, nothing. Or maybe we can return uh, undefined in the place. Let's use void operat operator to make sure that it returns undefined. And let's make a mandatory white space character, which will just um, be used to return a string with a single um, character space. We will need it later, possibly. Okay, our parser tells us that we have a mistake somewhere and unexpected, yeah, now I got it. I forgot the arrow uh, sign and now everything works well. We can add the underscore in front of our value and also after our value and now it does not really matter how many spaces we will have uh, at the beginning or at the end it will still work fine 
our true returns null and I'm not really sure why uh, let's see yeah because ID function returns the first element so let's change it we will accept the function and return the first uh, argument from there and it also works with numbers and everything else and let's do the last thing for today we are going to make our language understand um, multiple inputs separated by mandatory space how we can do that okay over here we will have this in parentheses and let's write it with star uh, star as in regular expressions means that it can be one or more let's delete this because this will repeat itself automatically and now we don't have the first element over here let's return the element number zero and what we have is white space one um, yeah zero zero returns the value over here so now I believe we are able to accept all these values and we basically made our parser understand multiple inputs separated by new lines or any uh, or any space and it just returns an array with two values the first value is um, null because we have white space and the second value is um, the second value is the value that we input insert in there how we can get a just singular value out of it possibly we can write something like main over here return an ID and over here main this will return the star and maybe we don't need this as well and no, actually we do need that in order to make our language understand multiple inputs but let's put it on the top over here okay now we got this maybe I will change the um, white space to just empty string so it's more clear that we don't have any input over there and I think that's all for today we are going to try to make strings and arrays in the next video so come check it out and I really appreciate it um, I really appreciate that you left comments and I got some really good amount of views because it was the first video I have ever released so thank you for that and I will see you in the next video